Hi everybody, welcome back to Novaseek. Today we chat to a good friend of ours, Corin de Villiers, and uh, she wrote this new book, How to Make More Money Out of Your Business. I think everybody should read it because if you're in business, well, that's the object of your business. But by the way, what's the purpose of your business? Have you ever thought about that? Because your purpose of your business is never to make money. The objective is. So the purpose is always that the people that make use of the business, if they buy product or they buy services from your business, it's always served to the best of your ability. And that everybody that's dependent on your business for an income has got a predictable, stable income. That's the purpose of your business. Your objective is to make as much money as possible. And Corinne is your goal. She's going to help you. But we're going to talk to you about success today. So, welcome, Corinne. Thank you very much, Richard. You're phenomenally successful. You're Thank an accountant. You. So, tell us what, what makes you successful. Uh, for me, it is a lot of things, a lot of little things, a lot of little things every day. Um, living healthily, success for me means to do what you love every day. Um, and I try to strive to do what I love every day. Very few people actually get to that point where they do what they love every day. Do you think the difference is that you really take time, because you were telling me that, that you take time to really think about this. Is that the difference? That you really think about what makes you happy? Yes, I think it's a big difference and I'm so glad that you're asking me that because I try and even tell my, my clients to do this, to take some time every week because people think that if they you know go on holiday once a year that that's enough every six months to think about these things. But if you can really have some strategy time set aside daily or weekly if you can. Um, so I take time out to think about it. I, I call it my strategy think time and I actually block it out in my diary yeah. and from time to time I would take a day or even a week if I have to uh, to reset. And that's so important? Absolutely critical, you absolutely know, critical. I've got a good friend and he always says leave was invented for a very specific reason um, and it's not just to go to the beach and get burnt uh, to third degree burns but to, to really reset the mind because your body resets after eight hours of sleep. But your mind, that's the thing that, that needs to, to be reset. So <clears throat> if you say that, that taking time off um, to, to reset, uh, have you got a specific uh, ritual that you follow? Do you meditate? Do you watch something on TV? Do you go for a run? What, what is your specific secret sauce around uh, your reset button? Me, definitely, yes. I, I run every day because that is kind of a time where I just get out in nature. But I also um, try at least uh, once a week or once every two weeks to take a day or half a day and just to actually sit on the couch or in bed preferably and watch something on TV that's maybe even a little bit mindless because my mind tends to work. That's the thing that works. Um, and and to get it to, sh to keep quiet, I've got to just numb it with something that I watch. But if I find, you know, I find that if I um, take that time uh, to give my brain and my mind a rest, that I can come back and I feel like a million bucks after that. I don't necessarily even enjoy it, uh, but I love when I when I can get up the next morning and I've actually had a rest. I, I do, I call it my summer feeling. I feel like spring, <laughs> so even in the middle of winter, so that is pretty cool feeling. Yeah. Do you agree that that's the one point where people that's in school business, where most of, of, of your clients, people that we work with, work because corporates is not a home for anybody. They get so stuck in getting the job done that if they forget about the other aspects in their life that also needs attention. Not just getting restful in mind and thinking strategically about their business, but also their health, their relationships, all those other things that really make life worthwhile. Uh, do you also find that, that, that your clients seem to miss that trick? Completely, Richard. Completely, they do. 
Um, and I mean, we were speaking about it earlier that they just go, 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 and go. And they never stop to think. They never take time off to rest. They never uh, do a little bit of anything for themselves, like a bit of exercise, not just for themselves, but to live healthy. I mean, if you're not healthy, you don't enjoy life. Um, or plan. I think we were talking about that as well. You, you need to you need to step away to plan and, and I talk about it in my book as well where I say when I tell my clients to hop in their car and go for a drive in their you know in cash flow prices when they when they when they don't know how they're gonna pay things they, they they can't imagine doing that. They can't imagine leaving now when everybody's freaked out and stressed and, and, and driving away or going for a ride and imagine. But that is the thing that you have to do to pull yourself away from that scenario so that you can get it objectively and I always do it when, 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 when we have a, a serious stressor in the business I walk away and uh, I'm, I'm glad that I can do it but I found that that's absolutely the best way to deal with these kind of things and most entrepreneurs don't yes they don't but to help that now you're not a typical accountant that, that, that we know now but do you think that that's a role that, that an accountant can play for their clients to be that accountability partner, to to help them to say, listen, step away, unplug, go and think about it. Because when we, and that's my experience, when we're stuck in the problem, you keep on banging your head against this one thing, you cannot get past it. But when you step away and you let your mind go, those answers come to you without really thinking about it. Absolutely, What's your experience? absolutely, absolutely. You have to have someone in your life that you can talk to more than one, if you can, uh, for different areas in your life um, that keeps you accountable. Uh, I always think of people trying to lose weight. You know, you go to a personal trainer, you go to a dietitian, and what, what happens? Do, do, do they actually force you to exercise or eat differently? No, but, you know, I'm going to go see them in a week's time and I'll send the eye quickly eat healthy and I, I exercise because you know maybe I lose that that uh, kilo that I was supposed to to lose the goal that I set for myself so you've got to have an accountability partners in business in life I mean I think that's that's one thing that's missing is, is you almost know that you need to have someone to help you with your finances but why do we miss the fact that you know you need someone to help with your life and I think Richard um, that's what we were talking about with you guys help um, stay accountable for your life goals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are other aspects in your life that are important. Absolutely, 300%. And, and it, it becomes this, this blame game where I've got a dietitian, mm -hmm. so I don't have to worry about my weight. No, no, it's still your weight. It's still your weight. It's still your chronic condition. It's still your business that you have to, to, to think about and, and really um, come up with solutions that, that you need for that. So, what other nuggets of gold can we find in this? Oh, I just talk about um, discipline, discipline, discipline. Unfortunately, it's painful, but um, uh, it's little steps every day. Little steps every day. Do the right thing every day. It doesn't, won't take up your whole day. If you look at financial management, it's five minutes to 10 minutes a day that you have to look at your important figures. Just be aware of what's going on in the business. Uh, that'll make the world of difference. And that's one of the ways that you keep yourself accountable. Mm. This book teaches you that if you've got the right tools, you can keep yourself accountable. Warren, you, you start your book with, with a couple of very, very direct questions. The questions that the most uncomfortable ones, because when you start talking about money, mm. uh, people become very uncomfortable. And then you use that, that, that word that, that most people shy away from, wealth. Mm. Because, we all have limiting beliefs around money. We all have wonder about, and, and I mean, lots of people have got this limiting belief that um, wealthy people are not nice people. And I mean, you hear it often. And, no, I, I don't want to be that wealthy mm -hmm. because uh, not wealthy people are not happy. They're not healthy. Well, wealthy people disagree with that. <laughs> but but you've got this concept about what 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 do we do with a million bucks? If I gave you a hundred a million bucks now, what do we do with it? Tell yeah, me about that. Uh, I love that question and you're absolutely right, it makes most people uncomfortable because they have absolutely no idea what they're going to do with a million bucks. 
And I also find that people have such a misconception about what they will, what their lives will be like with a million bucks. Um, uh, they think they'll be spending a lot of money and they'll be out there holidaying and they'll be, you know, uh, doing all kinds of things. Um, and the reality is, um, first of all, unfortunately, a million bucks isn't going to change a lot. <laughs> in nope. today's world so that reality first of all is quite a shocker because people think wow if i just get a million bucks well no it's going to change maybe your half a year of your life and then you go on to be the person that you were before maybe even worse off so um i love that question because it does make you think um and we were talking about thinking earlier when you said people don't like to think mm. they, they they shy away from thinking and um, so my book does um ask questions that will make you think. There's a lot of questions that you'll have to think about because if you're not going to think about these things, that, that's not going to change in your life. And, and our perceptions of money is often uh, wrong and misshapen because of our past, our parents, the way they grew up, mm -hmm. because of Facebook and social media and what we see on TV. When you think of really wealthy, you think of people in jets and, and fancy cars and wearing Cartier. And that's the kids of the world. Yes. <laughs> yes. They know what's it. Shopping court, yeah. The, so, um, so, so we've got a misconception about wealth. Yeah. And money. Absolutely. And, and <clears throat> we chase money so much. And, and money is never a thing to be chased. No. Money is something that you attract by the person that you become. Absolutely. And, and by, by being able to, um, <clears throat> to implement the tools that you teach people, do those daily management reports, understand your numbers, not that backside of a secret box or if there's money in the bank, we live and there's no money in the bank, we don't live, but, but understand your, your numbers and those kind of things. And that makes a business successful. Absolutely. So why wouldn't the same concept make your entire life successful? Oh yes, definitely. And, and, and we've the head, it's little discipline. Um, and so I, I can even go back to the idea of having lots of money. You think I can just do whatever I want. The truth is wealthy people actually have little disciplines that they do every day. And happy people have little disciplines that they do every day to ensure that they're happy. Um, and yeah, so it's not, uh, it's not um, the idea that there's, I don't know, it feels to me like people would think that that means lots of freedom. Uh, freedom comes from doing the things that you have to do initially yes. every day so that the rest of the day and the rest of the month and the rest of the year can be filled with joy and happiness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that comes back to personal leadership? Yes. Because you have to lead yourself every day to make those decisions, to be very diligent about doing those small things because small things added up over time becomes a big thing. Compound interest. Everybody complains about it, but nobody ever sees it. Mm -hmm. Darren Hardy wrote that book, The Compound Effect. Mm -hmm. and, and it just means that it's not just the rich people that work on compound interest, but compound interest works in every part of your life. Every aspect of your life. If, if you were putting that work every day in your relationship, your Same relationship thing. just grows. If you put it into your children, if you put it into your health, mm -hmm. into the time you've got. So to get back to, to your good days that you take, me time, reflection yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. 43 times in the New Testament it says, go and meditate on this. So even in religious texts, we, we are told you have to take time off. You have to, to go inside into your inner self and go and find those answers because those answers are there. And we also always use this, this image of this mountain climber standing in the valley or on the floor of the valley. And if you look around himself, what can he see? He can see the trees and the houses and the people because he's at the same level. And when he starts doing the work, he starts climbing. As he starts climbing, now suddenly you can see above the trees and you can see so much further. And as he climbs up, which is hard work, yeah. against the, the mountain, you can see further and further. And by the time you get to the top, you can see 360. The thing is that the view wasn't created when he got there. The view was always there. He had to do the hard work just to get it. And, and that's how life works. And I think you will agree with that. Is doing those small steps. He didn't leap from the bottom to the top in one mighty leap. He mm -hmm. one hand over the next, over the next. And that's how when you do those small little tasks every day, that is 
how you get to that. Nobody can preach in one year, in five years, in 10 years. But in 10 years, 10 years further down the way that you were when you started. And it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Oh yes, oh yes. Any overnight success that you look at, your, your uh, Mark Zuckerberg, your Taylor Swift, that seem to have appeared out of nowhere, go look where they came from. Yeah. 10, 15 years of work. Absolutely. Before they came to that point where that, where that was kind of the situation. And I love the analogy. It's such a brilliant, brilliant analogy because if you have to think of this guy climbing up the mountain, and what does he see every day? He sees these rocks and these stones and this, uh, and you can so easily imagine that that's not the way to the top. <laughs> like how's this touching rocks and being dirty and being in the sand away from the top? That is the step that you have to take. Yep. So looking at your daily financial figures doesn't seem like that's the answer to super wealth, but that's the, that is the answer to super wealth. Going for a daily run, uh, putting the effort into the relationship. That doesn't seem, that day to day things doesn't seem like that's going to be the things that will take you to the top. But those are important things. I love that encouragement. At the bottom of the front page, it says Bizzack. What's next? Yes, um, I'm taking my franchise nationally and hopefully internationally in the next five to ten years. Uh, we're accountants and we are accountability partners for business owners when it comes to their finances. Fantastic. And that's the difference. Having that big vision, seeing what is possible, because that's the big dream. Well done. Thank you very much, Richard. I want to ask you to tell me a little bit more about Novaseek. Ah, Novaseek. Novaseek is, is a dream that was built out of hardship. And we, we figured out that everybody should be really happy in the but very few people find out how to. And then I, I read a book, and it was it was all about um, the migration of large groups of people. And you can take it back to the Bible as well. People get lost, and they trick around in the same spot for forty years before they actually find the promised land. Um, and most people live like that. Most people don't have a map to their lives and they don't get anywhere and they wonder what happened because they were this superstar at school they were the, the uh, best student and suddenly it just fizzled out so Nova Seek is, is all about the name Nova the star in everybody Love it. and then Seek is the relentless seeking for that star in everybody because <clears throat> you don't have to believe in anything but you have to believe in, uh, in physical laws. And if you want to argue with, with gravity, you can go to the roof and you can jump off and see if you want to argue about that. So if you look at statistics, the, the statistical chance that you were born and you're sitting here today, have you ever thought about it? Mm. It's an easy sum to work out, but I can yeah. show you. The answer is one in 400 trillion. Mm. That's so, so if you look at the universe, the universe of order, yeah. it's explained by physical laws. So there's nothing random in the universe. Mm. Why would you be here by random chance? Mm. Such a good point. So, yeah. so you and me and everybody else are here for a purpose. Mark Twain said, you've got two very important days in your life. The first when you're born and the second when you figure out why you were born. <laughs> yeah. And 99% of people miss that in life. They, they do things every day that they hate. Not just dislike, they hate it. But they do it for all the wrong reasons. Putting food on the table, paying the rent, and then they die. Or they get yes, stressed. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's, that's what life is supposed to be. And the fact is, this life was given to us to live abundantly. Absolutely. To experience everything that has ever been created mm -hmm. now yeah there's the horrible things that's been created but if you look at what man has been able to create then you should be able to experience yeah, so should i not be able to share with that yes yes and and you need abundance in your life 
to, to be able to be yeah. Yes, you need money. That's why we've got people like you. Yeah. Um, because if you want to live the good life, if you want to um, meet the people you want, if you want to see the art that you want to or have own it in your house, you want to have that little sculptured body or uh, whatever, it takes money. Absolutely. Money has never been there to bring us happiness. Money is there to make us comfortable. But limiting beliefs shovel the two and then people get confused. <clears throat> so Novus Seek is all about helping people design that map for their life and actually achieving it. But also leaving the past in the past. Understanding it. Now, there's a thing that says experience is useless. But examined experience is priceless. Oh, yes. Oh, no, so, right now. life <laughs> never happens to you. Yeah. It happens for you. But the lessons we are supposed to learn in life is lessons that we must learn. And so often you see people that go through the same thing after the time after time after time because they never stand still to say, oh, mm. the universe is trying to teach me a lesson. Yeah. What must I learn from this lesson? And when you learn from a lesson, you become the person the lesson tells you to become. Yeah. And, and again, like I said earlier, money is not something we chase. Mm. Success is not something we chase. Happiness is not something we chase. It is something we attract by the people you become. Absolutely. And therefore, when you when you are looking for a life partner, a mating life, it's not somebody that you pursue. It's somebody you attract. And that's what we people miss it. And, and, and we've got this wonderful exercise. Well, it's a long-term exercise that we do with people. And, and we take them through this exercise we will ask them 123 questions that they have to answer about the ideal mate they want. Yeah. And when they describe the, the ideal woman or man in detail, they get the second exercise that says, describe the mate that person wants. Mm. And then you start working on that and we've seen it time and again. When you start working on that and you start ticking the boxes off, you know what happens? Your ideal mate pitches up. Because <laughs> yeah. you are becoming the person yeah. that you're supposed to become. Yeah. And it goes to all success in life. Yeah. Is you must understand what you are trying to attract. So if you kind of describe it's not magic, but it's not. It is absolutely like magic. But when you, when you know what you're describing, exactly what you're talking about wealth, if you know exactly what wealth means to you, you can attract. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. and you've experienced yeah, yeah. it, I've experienced it. You ask people, so um, what can you do with a million bucks? And they can tell you they'll buy the house or buy the car or whatever. So okay, forget about that. What about 10 million? And then they'll invest a bit and they'll, but you say, forget about that. I'll give you a hundred million. And they go like, no. I don't know. Yeah. So, but if you give a hundred million dollars to Alan Musk today, he'll say, oh, well, we'll use it for that. And then yeah, that's exactly. important because he, his life vision is so much bigger. So another thing is all about that is to say, how big can you imagine your life? To yeah. Be? So, because when you start to imagine that, Einstein said imagination is far stronger than knowledge. Mm. Because oh, yes. knowledge will only take you so far, but imagination will take you anywhere. Yeah. So when you can start to visualize, to imagine, and that's what I love about you taking time off. Mm -hmm. Because when you sit there, you're not just solving problems, you're visualizing. Absolutely. You're visualizing how it must happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what we help people to do, is to, to step away from the issues of today and start looking at how, what is the possibilities, because, I mean, if you talk to politicians that always talk about equality, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as equality. Because nobody's equal in effort, in vision, in abilities, nothing. But what is equal is the day we are born, we are born with infinite potential. Yes. And nobody can measure infinite. Yes. And nobody can tell you where infinite is equal. 
So it depends on where the decisions you make, the awareness that you have about your life and about what you should do. And yes, we are not all brought up with that awareness and therefore you must intentionally go and see somebody that can help you to unlock that awareness Absolutely. and start living that because the moment you start living in potential that is when everything changes because when you start looking at potential your mindset starts to yep. change and you you don't say i can't but you start saying what if yes and when you start living in what if you start pushing those boundaries all the time of what is possible yes what if i do this yes but it goes back to the mountain climber you have to do the work every day you every can't day. just get to the top no you have you, to there's not there's no magical genie that you can say oh i wish i had mm -hmm. that and you're gonna have it or if only if only if only i was born rich yes no very few people are born rich in fact most of the richest people that are self-made. Yes. Self-made. Let's talk about that. Nobody's self-made. But that's a term we've used. But they've got these teams around yes. them because they have the vision. Yes. And a true yes. leader is somebody that convinces, just like you, convinces people that this is the way. Yeah. And they follow you because their dream is not as big as yours. Mm. But your dream makes them feel a lot better. Yes. And, and that's the inspiration. And that is true leadership. Is what when, when your vision changes the way that other people live their lives and see their own potential, that is true leadership. And, and that is why we love to partner with people like you, is you understand what we're talking about. And your clients need what you give them, but they also need what oh, we, yes. we can help them. Because they can't do this without that. Yes. It is, a, it is true, you can't. What yeah. is the one without the other? Because we have these holistic lives. You, you, you cannot just develop one part and the other parts go limp. No. Some way it's going to catch up. It will. Yes. You'll get away with it for some time. Oh yes, but it always catches okay. up with you. You might spend all your time in your business now and forget about the family life. And the day that you sell the business, you put all this money, then you're all alone. Absolutely. And you keep selling it. Yes. And I mean, the, the one image uh, I heard it once from, from an old guy and, and it's a, an image that haunts me. He said, imagine the day you're lying on your bed and you do have black ones around the bed but there are other ones around the bed as well. And the other ones say to you, we are the dreams, we are the talents, we are everything that we've given to you and you were supposed to give us life. Why must we die with you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the question that we always ask people is how many talents have you got? And when, 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 you, when you talk to people you can see that they start thinking about it and they will say well two, three so that's not the answer the yeah. answer is you do not know <laughs> because this is how the, it works it's as you develop one yes. talent the next one is, is Exposed yes, to you and then the next and then the, the next. others. Absolutely. So for sure. And, and, and that's what the exciting part is, is you can never stop finding out how many talents you've got. Yeah. No. Um and you have to start. You have to start. With one talent. And everybody is born with a talent. Yes, to and an yes. obvious talent. I mean, yes. We, we yes, yes, yes. Given infinite amount of talents, but we yeah. are, it's a taster. It's mm -hmm. that forthcoming attractions that yeah. you used to see in the movies when you were little because um, when you start working on intention well first of all recognizing that you have a talent mm -hmm. there's there's no getting away from it if yeah. you walk up right and you can breathe you've got a talent mm -hmm. what is it and how are you going to develop yes. and what will be the next one and the next one and the next one i mean that's why the bible talk about the talents and the one that got five and yeah. but the yeah. one that got one he hit it <laughs> yeah. and maybe he used it. Yeah. So in our world, that becomes a key performance indicator. Because it's something you can measure. So if we start 
measuring our talents. What else can we measure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and yes, life should be measured. In finance, Absolutely. income statements and balance sheets and <coughs> management accounts, all kinds of things, so that you can see where you're going. You've got a plan, your budget, and you've got uh, real time data. And now you can start doing the judgment. Yeah. And, and the same is in our, our lives. When you've got a plan and you measure your real time data to that, you can see, am I on course or not? Absolutely. I mean, you have to do it. You have to have do it. it. I mean, if, if a pilot takes off um, from LAX, Los Angeles, and he flies to New York, and he's one degree off of yeah. the takeoff, yeah. you will land in Florida. Absolutely. So, if you do not have a plan, now, I mean, we, we all start out life with these wonderful ideas. And I mean, if you ask my nine year old, I'm going to be spectacularly successful. So, because everybody starts off with that. Mm -hmm. But that's why people get midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's why. Right on the line to do so. Of course. Because you forget about your. Well, you never had a plan. That child in you. With a dream. Because when enough people tell you you can't, yes. you start believing. Yeah. Do. And that's why you've got so many people in all age homes mm. only talking about the regret they've got. Yeah, it's too sad. They never talk about what made them happy, what what they achieved. Mm. And I mean, if you if you think, if you look at the ego, I mean, have you ever thought why people cling to this life so desperately? Because I mean. You, you are a spiritual being and, and, and you are perpetual. Yeah. You will go on and, and yeah, yeah, we can yeah. talk about that. Yeah. But the one thing that is born the day you are born and die uh, when you die so is the die. ego. And the ego says, hey, bud, I, I don't want to die. die. <laughs> yes. I want to also want to run your life. <laughs> and, and, and that's why people's got so much regret because the, the ego starts kicking and says, oh, yeah, you didn't do much with this life. Yeah. What now? So, and, and that's what number six is all about is to, to help people with that. And then we get to that point where we say, now is it help people to find joy in their lives. I love it. Because yeah. in that little one little word, it says everything. And everyone should have it. And everybody should have it. Because we were born with abundance that everybody should have it. And they had it. Yeah, they had lost it. Yes. Because Pick up kids. Everything they, yes. Because every kid mm. is an artist. Yes. Everyone. Mm. They, and they know that they're artists mm. until somebody tells them. Yes. No, yes. Every kid is an entrepreneur. Mm. Every kid is an athlete. Until somebody tells them that you can't. Yes. And that's what we want to stop. Mm. That's where we want we want to help people to really find that inner light and, and let it shine through the world. Because the world desperately needs it. And they were made to be that life in that space and they're not fulfilling that role in that space Absolutely. either. Because everybody's space will create it just for yes. them. Nobody else can take it out. Absolutely. If, if you, I always see this image of, of this little meter. Mm. That the more you use it, the, the more the meter goes up. But if yeah. you don't use it, it just stays empty. Yeah, yeah. So if you get to the end of your, of your life and say, oh, thank you life. But my meat is empty. I didn't contribute anything. Yeah. You didn't see anything of the glory within me. Yeah, it was hidden. It was hidden. Now, the most fantastic thing for me is uh, in, in Eastern philosophy, when you really want to pay somebody a, a compliment, you say, Namaste. Oh, yes. Namaste means I bow to the divine in you. I love it. When we start recognizing the divine in each other, mm -hmm. imagine how the problems in this world will go away. No, it will be a completely different world. But it, it will help so many people to really find that joy in their lives. So that's what we're all about. I love it. Love and um, and we, we're excited. We're excited to share this with as many people as possible because we're convinced it will make a huge difference in people's lives. I think you'll love it. Where can we find you? We start to place to start, novaseek.co.za yeah. and somewhere here yeah, our buttons, click it, 
Go and like us, subscribe, <laughs> and you'll get a lot more information. There's lots of online courses. Uh, we do uh, Facebook Live, uh, and when lockdown is over, we'll do uh, live events again. But um, but thank you for popping in today. Oh, it was awesome. It I is it. great talking to you. Thank you. All the best with your book. Thank you very uh, much. So we're looking forward to the next one, and yeah. we're looking forward to having you back again. Thank you, thank you very much. much.